yo, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy, such a wild world, a.k.a. the bird, and I'm the host for the bird with the show. Okay? Okay. We <laughs> at it again. We are at it again. Episode number 19. Episode number 19 today. Um, and I'll get into the topic in a few, but... Um, Today we have a special guest on the Birdcage Show, a very good friend of mine, you know what I'm saying? We go back to Camden High days, uh, actually graduated from Rutgers together the whole nine, you know what I'm saying? We're in the same field, um, which we'll talk about, but, um, you know, he's been, uh, uh, I think I started teaching in 94, yeah. and then you came the year after, yep. 95, he was at yeah. Vets, he was the VP at Morgan Village, he was the VP. Um, uh, actually, the principal at McGraw, yes, where that's where I'm rocking my Masai University. Shout out to my my youngest <laughs> angel at Masai University right yes, now, sir. studying to be a, a anesthesiologist and playing tennis. I say all that to say, when Scott was the principal at McGraw, she was actually and a student there, and yes. she was one asking us like, like, what? Well, Cause she called him Uncle Scott, and she was like, well, what do I call him in school? And Uncle Scott, it was. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Not Principal Shanklin, it was still Uncle Scott. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and also, where we all graduated from, he was also the principal at uh, Camden High, yeah. and currently he's at Davis? Dudley. 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 I know it was one of the D's. Please. He is a proud member of the class of 1989, Camden yes, High. Yes, 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 yes. You see, you see, yes, I, there it is. You see, I didn't mention that, people. You see, I didn't mention that. All I said was Camden High, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm a great 88. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what they're talking about. So, yeah, great 88. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but anyway, we got my man Scott Shanklin on, a.k.a. The Barbarian, a.k.a. Scott LaRock. You know what I'm saying? My good friend. You know what I'm saying? Glad to have What's you on. What's the deal, you know what I'm saying? Saying, definitely, up? definitely. Scott, before we get started, say what's up to the people. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm, I'm glad to be on the birdcage, finally. I'm here. <laughs> and we, we have uh, uh, some, some, some important information to give to you guys, so I can't wait. And can't, let's get started. True indeed, true indeed. Today, we're going to get right into um, it. On this episode, we're going to be talking about the lack of black male educators, educators in education, why that might be. Um, the importance of of having black male educators in education, um, you know, are we fairly treated? Um, are our opportunities withheld sometimes because we're black male educators? So we're going to kind of dive all into all of that, and that's the reason why we wanted to bring Scott on because he's been uh, an educator, black male educator on every level, middle school, um, you know, yeah, high true. school elementary school, uh, administration, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So he runs the whole gamut. I'm just a teacher. <laughs> don't say that. No, well, nobody I'm not going to say it like that. I'm not going to say it like that. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're more than a teacher. You're a teacher, coach, mentor. You know, you're at the forefront of parenting. Yes, there it is. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So we're going to get right into it. You know what I'm saying? And we're going to start with Scott, our guest. And we're just going to ask you, why do you think black male educators are super important? Black male educators are super important because number one, we're males right. in a female dominated, primarily dominated mm -hmm. field. Um, male educators bring uh, certain aspects to our younger male uh, uh, students, um, an ability to mentor them, um, ability to see themselves in us. Um, it also brings a, a level of stability inside the school where there is a presence in the building that they know of, of they're going to be comforted, they're going to be uh, secure, um, they're going to have that strong male presence inside of the building mm -hmm. somewhere where a young man could go to and, and express some of the things that males go through or that understanding that males go through even at a young age. like. Um, and in pre-K, if you have a male teacher uh, with a, a, a young man or a, a right. little male child, you know, they can communicate differently. You know, there's a different look. There, there might be a look where he's doing a behavior and there's a look that a male teacher can give him and they'll stop, mm -hmm. you know. Or there'll be something that they'll, they're doing and they say, oh, well, that's boys being boys and they'll mm -hmm. allow that to go mm -hmm. on. Because that's part of the process of growing up as a male. Right. Um, with the females, of course, you know, 
the little the young ladies see the you know they you know, see the father father figures they see security they see a balance um um where you know they may have some issues that only sometimes a male can offer them or sometimes you can see a perspective and say hey I, you know you all right you know you can see that and give them that almost like that fatherly advice. right right and that's a that, that's a good point to add on to there um especially when we're talking about urban communities you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying a lot of times there's not a father figure in right. the household right. so <clears throat> teachers we become that that male right you know father fatherly figure to, right. to a lot of kids, you know what I'm saying? Scott, How's let it? me ask you a quick question. What made you choose education when you were when you were embarking upon your college um, career? Well, that, I'm great you asked that because um, it was funny. I, I, I have an economics degree, um, and I thought I was going to minor in education uh, at first, but I was like, it made you jump. I felt, as, as a young man going through college, it made you jump through too many hoops to become a teacher. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna just stick with education. Um, um, 1991, the summer program, uh, shout out to Rowan uh, University Champ Program. They gave me an opportunity to be a, a, a college counselor, an opportunity to be a counselor in the summertime. And what happened, one of the teachers got sick and it was like, well, we need somebody to step in. And they saw how I was interacting with the students. And they said, well, can you step in? I said, okay, cool, no problem. And I saw how I had the relationship with the students, and I was like, "Man, I could do this." And then the other teachers was like, "You know, you you got a, we see you got a, a natural ability to to, to <clears throat> teach. Why don't you step into that?" So um, I said, "Okay." I took the test, and then um, when I graduated, um, you know, I did apply to some some of the fields and and with you know with my degree. And the corporate area, but something kept drawing me back to working with students, working with kids. That that feeling when the, when that light bulb comes on, you know. So um, I got an opportunity to work with uh, Champ full time to be a college counselor, and then I started working with them. Uh, started working with the students, the high school students, the middle school students, and then um, it you know just the opportunity came and said you know I can. I'm working with my community right now, but I think I can give a bigger impact if I was a teacher. So I, you know, I had yeah, I took the tests, uh, passed it, and then I became an elementary school teacher through the alternative route. Yeah. You know what's funny? Um, I grew up in Catholic school, <clears throat> and in Catholic school, it's all women. Mm -hmm. um, I had I didn't get my first male teacher until I was at Camden Catholic. And I think he was my geometry teacher in tenth grade, but in Catholic school it was none, so it was all women. <clears throat> I transferred late in my junior year, going into our senior year, to Camden High, and to see all the black male yeah. teachers, yeah, it was right. amazing. Yeah. Like to have, I, I don't yeah. even think I had a woman teacher. Yeah. I think I had Miss Veggie on. That was like my yeah. only woman teacher <laughs> yeah. um, when I was at yeah. Camden High. But yeah. all my other, my English teacher, right, right, my, yeah. my right, science right. teacher, teacher yeah. my all of them were right. men. Right. And coming from a, a education a school system mm -hmm. where men teacher were far and few, and then to come to Camden High, where majority all the teachers were not only men, but they looked like me. Right, they were right, black right, men, right, black right, educated men right. from our community. Yes, that was like that was yeah, like a make like that's, that's and you, how, what do you think made that change? Like what do you made? Why? Yeah, that's a good point. Like why why you know you think the all, drop off? Yeah, the drop off. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. like you said, when we was at Camden High. And even when I was coming through hats, like you know what I'm saying, they were there. Right, right. They were there. I saw them every day. Like you know what I'm saying. Several but, several factors play into that. Um, one, I think it was a, a little more uh, accept, uh, well, not acceptable, but it was a easier path that they made for uh, males to get into the school system. Mm -hmm. It was a push to put male figures into the mm -hmm. school system, um, especially with the change of doing the '70s and mm -hmm. in, in the mm -hmm. early '80s. You see where. Uh, a lot of times where the young men were coming out of college or mm -hmm. coming back from, from the... It's a from, great, great opportunity yeah, for great opportunity. coming out of college during that time, time period yeah. where you wasn't afforded other opportunities and other genres. Because of the color of your skin. Because of the color of your skin. So teaching. teaching yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. That and makes then, sense. And a lot of times, a lot of... And it paid well. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? People think we don't make too much money. Well, you can keep thinking that, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but at the saying? time, it's, yes, like right. you said, it paid well. Mm -hmm. It paid well at the time. It was stability. It had, you know, we had benefits. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times, the, the uh, 
the, the gentlemen that are coming back from like even from the the war of Vietnam mm -hmm. and coming out of the the service that was a good opportunity for them to to get into an edu uh, uh, a situation where right. they had good benefits they were doing something for the community um, uh, they were being a role model so that was actually pushed and encouraged right. and then you know like you said um, even in middle school I had a lot of male teachers uh, my principal was an African American male uh, my 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 math teacher was a black man my my social studies teacher a black man um, so then when going over to Camden High you know, you could go up and down all the floors and you had at least three or four men on the floor mm -hmm. that, that, you know, that were educated, that right. were, were either a teacher, uh, a coach, mm -hmm. somebody you knew that, that, had, that had that stature of, of, of influence uh, um, or they could, they could teach you or they could guide you. So um, Camden High was a great experience when you went there. It yes, was like, you, absolutely. You thought every school was like this. Right, you know, right, that, right, right. Like it was true. men everywhere and, and men played a prominent role. Men so. in administration, yes, right. yes, men yes, in yes, discipline, yes. men right. like on it the, just, board, it was like, board, right, on the board, <clears throat> you know, on the board and like, you know, it, it just was, it, it was a great experience to mm -hmm. see, you know, us right, exactly. educating right. us and, um, yes. you know, it, it's just, I know it's a push now. I know they're pushing to now back, to try to, to get, get uh, black male educators. Mm -hmm. And I know Rowan is pushing hard right. to try to get um, young people, um, African-American mm -hmm. males, to get into education. Mm -hmm. And it is a misconception that teachers don't make enough money, mm -hmm. that they work long hours. That they, but, but teachers are, um, you guys are not really, you guys don't get the respect that you deserve. Right. You know, and, and it is a thankless job. It is a thankless job because, to be honest, to be honest, um, you, I may remember the name of four of my teachers in all my years of school. Mm -hmm. And those four teachers made a powerful impact. Right. That's why you remember those four teachers. Right. You understand what I'm saying? But for the most part, you got some teachers you come across that don't really impact you. So you don't mm -hmm. remember. So y'all, y'all career is thankless. But mm -hmm. at the same token, you guys are in a, and I say it earlier, you guys are in the forefront of parenting. Yes. You guys are in the forefront of parenting. Teachers are everything to kids. Teachers are everything to kids, and you guys, I, my hat goes off to you. And I, you know, I retired from the police department now, and I'm working in the schools. This mm -hmm. is my fifth school year, and t listen, my hats go off to you. my hat goes off to you guys. Much appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> you, you gotta think about it. You know, we, we, 180 days, you're with somebody else's child. 180 days, almost uh, approximately six to seven, eight hours, depending mm -hmm. on if they stay at the after school mm -hmm. program. Um, so the majority of their, uh, from, from now, from three, three years old to 18 years old, you know, that's 15 years you, they are with somebody else rather than their parents. And I said that, yeah, I said that last week. Mm -hmm. yep, I said that last week. I you said it last down. week. I yep, said I broke, broke down, down the times yeah. on what I really spent with my kid, my mm -hmm. children, um, you know, because I work. And I work right. like a, a 10 hour, 12 hour day, sometimes 16 hours. So I broke it down. So my thing is, and we talked about, me and my youngest daughter talked about this yesterday. You know, a lot of parents, school, a lot of your education starts at home. We get that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the teacher teaches the, the English, math, science, those type of things. It's the parent's job to reinforce what the teacher is teaching. Yeah, it's to sit down and reinforce what the teacher's teaching because let's be honest, y'all spend more time with my kid than I do. Right. You right. know what I mean? So when my kid, the teacher used to call about my kid, I believe the teacher. I'm not one of the parents that believe my kid. Let me tell you right. why. Because I my, t my kid didn't act up at home. So I know in seven, eight hours, oh, she cut a fool in, in class. So I, I believe it. I used to come and I believe it, and I used to tell my kid, why would an adult, now, you know, you do got some adults that lie on kids, mm -hmm. we get that, but for the most part, nah, she ain't lying on you, right. you spend, this lady, this lady or man spending seven, eight hours a day with you, she know your personality just as good as I know yeah, your personality, that's, that's true. Yeah. you know what I mean, and I, again, you know, I think, like, my daughter's eighth grade teacher was a male, Mr. God rest his soul, Mr. Robinson, Tim Robinson, mm -hmm. at Cream, okay. amazing man, and I think he set the standard for her, the young women in her class, on how a male is supposed to treat yeah. females. That's a, that's, a, that's a huge impact. And when you got good males in front of your students, it sets a standard, especially if they come in looking, mm -hmm. dress mm -hmm. shirt, mm -hmm. nice pants, mm -hmm. shoes. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, right. If they come in looking, it, it makes young, young people 
like yo, that's how you know black men supposed to look. Like right. I like that. That's you know what I mean. Right. True you know. Me. Now let me ask you this, Scott. Do you feel as though that that we're held at a different standard than than a non-black male educators? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, we're handled differently uh, in the building. Um, our responsibilities sometimes uh, far exceed what other res responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of times, uh, for example, let's say. A, a female teacher's having trouble with a young man. You they know? calling you. Um, so what they'll do, they'll find me, mm -hmm. and I get pulled out of my class, and I have to go handle right, that right, discipline right. issue. Right. Um, and a lot of times, you know, you know, you know, we sometimes we get held to a different standard when actually when our, as far as our observations and mm -hmm. things go. Um, so the expectations, yes, they're they're a little different. Right. They're a little different. Um, now I haven't had the experience of having being having that expectation in a suburban district like right. like you you did, uh, but um, I think they they're, they're still the same, um, you know, especially when uh, the administrators sometimes are female administrators, you know, they you know sometimes that's a very difficult situation to deal with as well because you know they may be having some personal issues right 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 and right you look right and you may be, <laughs> you're reminded you're reminded by, because <laughs> well, I, i've always liked having um male teachers somewhere in the buildings mm -hmm. you know what i mean somewhere in the building you know to kind of offset some of the things that right. goes on right. um and that's just as a parent not that i'm not an educator that is as a parent point mm -hmm. of view um so i just know that men People of color are mm -hmm. held to a different standard anyway. Anyway. Right. Anyway. 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 So now you society, look, so yeah, so now you are you a male <laughs> of color right. in right. a female dominated right. profession. Right. right. Um, that's because, now the female dominated profession. Right, because sometimes you even have to watch your tone. Mm -hmm. You know, even even when I was an administrator, I still had to watch my tone when I spoke to uh, fe you know, females, whether right. they were parents. Uh, whether they were stu you know students or whether they were teachers, you know, because they already see you as the authority. They already mm -hmm. see you as you're coming in to drop the hammer. And it's right. not necessarily you're just trying to get an understanding. So you sometimes you have to come. You, you always have to come like really. You have to lower your your tone and be more level headed. Be just be mindful, you right? You just have to be mindful at all times. Right. You know, you know <clears throat> what to say, uh, where to look, you know how you say it. You know, right. um, because of all these things that that could possibly be misinterpreted as one thing to another. So it's it's a very fine line mm -hmm. as, as as males that you have to like navigate through. Mm -hmm. You know, um, he made a statement about um, he's never had the opportunity in a suburban district. Mm -hmm. And and let me ask you this: you such being in Pensacola, mm -hmm. which is technically a suburban mm -hmm. school district. Um, do you think they expect more of you as a black male teacher than? Um, yeah, I mean, standards is definitely higher. You know what I'm saying? And the fact that it's not many of us at all at the high school. You know what I'm saying? Is I can count them on one hand the black male teachers um, in Pensacola. So, you know, the, it, they're looking because we're not blending in. You know what I'm saying? Like we stand out. I mean, we stand out. We're black. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So Definitely. I feel as though that you have to make sure you are doing, and and I mean, everybody should make sure they're doing what you're supposed to be doing. You know what right. I'm saying? But you got to make sure you're on point. Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying? You got to make sure you're, you're, you're teaching the curriculum. Right. You got to make sure um, dress code. You got to right. make sure you're you where all you're the at, rules. where you're supposed right. to be at the time you're supposed to be. You know what I'm right, saying? Because, because it's easier it. to pick you out. Yeah. Like if I'm late to a faculty meeting, they especially know. in my department, because I'm in the math department right now, I'm the only black male teacher in the math department. So if I'm late to a math department meeting, hey, where's Coach Bird? Yep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or when you I come walking in, in five minutes late, like everybody's like, oh, Coach Bird got here five minutes late. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not blending in. You know right. what I'm saying? And I'm not saying that others not held to that standard, but hey, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, it, it, you know it, what I'm saying? If I'm the only black male <laughs> walking into this meeting and I'm late, they like, it, 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 yeah. it, I felt that, late. I felt that uh, like, Wednesday, like our first meeting we had, we had everybody in the uh, cafeteria. 
And um, when I walk in, everybody know who I am. Right, right. Right? Because I'm like the only black male right. in the building that's a teacher. So when I walk in, it's like, oh, there's goes Mr. Shank. Hey, Shank. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if, like you said, if I come in late or I don't come in at all, mm -hmm. it's noticeable. Noticeable. Right, Very. noticeable. Very. But, but if, if Miss Miss A or Miss B right. is not there, it's not as it's noticeable. It's not as noticeable. I, I also think that um, the breakdown happened when um, our kids don't see male teachers in front of them, mm -hmm. so they don't aspire to be, to be. male That's teachers. That's a good point. That's um, a good point. I, I know, like when I talk to kids, when I talk to children, um, when I do all the, because every year I find myself speaking to groups of young mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. and I talk to them about attainable success, right? right? People don't realize that the postman, the teacher, the cop, the firefighter, right. that's success. Mm -hmm. that's success. Because right. you do your 25, mm -hmm. guess what? You don't got to work no more. You get a check until yep. the Lord call you home. Yep. Right. You understand what I'm true. saying? Right. That's, that's attainable, obtainable success. And when they stop putting the black male in front of our children in the urban setting, mm -hmm. our young children stop desiring to, to be kids. that. So what happens is when you stop putting that in front of right. our kids, our kids don't know what they look like. Right. So they don't want to be it. That's true. You know? Because exactly, uh, um, exactly. I know... Me and Scott's career started a little different. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, when I graduated um, from Rutgers in '94, I had a, a sociology degree, had no clue what, what I was going to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so thanks to the original Coach Bird, you know what I'm saying? I remember he just—it was like late in August. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, you got an interview tomorrow. An interview? <laughs> I ain't apply for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> what right, are you talking about? Right. And I'm like, all right, so, you know what I'm saying? So, more to come, get my suit out, you know what I'm saying? He's like, yeah, I'm going to come with you. My dad coming with me? Is that an interview? I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> all right, you know what I'm saying? All right. Shot down to the board. That's when uh, Dr. Dawson was yes. uh, superintendent. Yeah. Super, yes. So, I'm interviewing with the superintendent of schools. Like, what is? I was in an interview for about 15 minutes. Got kicked out, you know what I'm saying? He was in there because, you know, they longtime friends. They in there <laughs> chopping it up. He come out. We in the car. All right, so I get the job. He's like, I don't worry about it. You know what I'm saying? And, like, school's about to start. And I'm like, did I get the job? Like, well, that's September. I was in front of the front of a class. Like, they looking at me. <laughs> I'm looking at them. <laughs> you got to figure it out. But to bring it back to what you were saying, I just instantly went back to my schooling and all the black male educators right. that, that, that I saw coming right. up. Through, you know what I mean, Bonzo and Hatch and <clears throat> Cam the High and mm -hmm. what they did for me and the impact that they made in my life. And I just went back to doing basically what I saw them do. Right. Like, okay, this is how they dress. This is how they carry themselves. Right. This is how they <clears throat> cared for their mm -hmm. students. That's what a black male educator looks like, should be. I'm one now. And 28 years later, here I am because I love it. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. I, I fell in love with it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And it's that crazy really, so. because um, when I came home and, and waiting to go into the police department, I was at Camden County College. A situation happened and I had to go see the head mm -hmm. of the Camden campus. I walked in there and it was Coach DeMary. <laughs> that's and right. So when the, when the, when the, the, the head right. of a college yeah, looks right. like you, right. Shout out you, to Coach you feel that's so right. different yes. Yes. when yes. The, yes. You, yes. this man yes. was yes. the head yes. of Camden yes. County yes. College Coach and he Mary. looked like me yes. right. and he was yes. from my yes. neighborhood yes. and he yes. still lived in yes. my community. Yes. So when they look like you, yes. you feel a little at ease and you respect mm -hmm. yeah. what you're learning, mm -hmm. I, I think, little, think a, little a little bit more. more. That's true. You know, I, I think you respect it a little bit more. I agree. You know, true you true. take pride in it. Yeah, true. That's true. You take pride, pride in it. it. You, take, you take pride definitely in it. Definitely take pride in it. And, and they look up to you and they say, well, you know what? I'm not going to do this to Mr. Shank. I'm not going right, to do right, this to Right, 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 right. Let me get this done. Right, You know, true. And even, even if they don't get it done, they feel more, you know, if you ask them, like, hey, what's going right. on? Right, They'll say, they're more comfortable talking yeah, to more you. Comfortable you know what I'm saying? Talking to you, or you can you can tell when they're tense because right. you're a male. Right, you can, right. And you, you know can tell different situations just, that you've you know, been through. You can pull them to the right. side. And they, Plus, I, you got a sense of empathy. 
You know right, what I mean? There's right, a sense right, of empathy, right, you know right. what I mean, versus sympathy. Right. They're like, because I don't, I, I, I don't like it when our teachers start to feel sorry for our kids. Right. But when they feel sorry for our kids, they lower the bar. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Don't lower mm-hmm. the bar. Mm-hmm. Have empathy for our kids. Right. Keep the bar high. The bar have high. empathy and right. help, help them, them work today. Right. Help them right. get there. Right. right. Don't low. Don't have exactly. sympathy and lower the bar. Right. Exactly. You know what I mean? Keep it up there and get our kids to work up. Exactly. You know what I mean? And and I think so when it, when when we our kids. When people look like me in front of me, mm-hmm. I and I believe that they can relate to me a little more, That's I'm a little bit more comfortable. Right. That's it, right. relatability. Yeah. You know what I mean? Said, I mean, it's easy to, if, if I'm a student and, and I feel as though, you know what I'm saying, Coach Bird has probably been through what I'm going through right now right. because we're from the same place. Let me talk much. to him. I can talk to him. And be honest and with him. I can him. be honest with him, right? right? I can just let it go, talk to him, and right. see what he has to say about it. And I'm not saying that, that other races, can't because I'll tell you right now, um, at, at Yorkship, fifth grade, uh, Miss Marlin, mm-hmm. white lady, one of the best teachers I ever had. She's in my top five of teachers right. that I've ever had, right. and she looked nothing like me, right. nothing like anybody in my yeah. family. You know what I'm saying? Right. But the way she cared for us and the things that she introduced us to, the trips we used to educational right. trips we used to right. go on and stuff like that, like. She just opened my mind up to just a different way of thinking, right. like a different experience like right. that was just so impactful. So we're not saying that, we, you know, we, we know not. all, we're the end all to be right. all because you do have some black el- male educators that should not be in education right. as well. Right. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Like you yeah. do have some. You have some teachers, that, period, that should be in education. That's what I'm saying. That's what right. I'm saying. Education. So we're not just you saying know. it's just about us, but we're just saying it's a lack of us. Yeah. And we just wanted to talk about that a little bit and, um, you know, if you have views, make sure you like, subscribe, comment, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? We do have a lack of male teachers, period. Mm-hmm. Rather they're, I, I, more importantly, because we're in the urban community, mm-hmm. there's a lack of black male teachers, mm-hmm. a lot of, a real lack of black male teachers, but we have a lack of male teachers, mm-hmm. period. period. Like, uh, I was looking up some statistics, like in the United States, it's uh, um, almost about, and I'm a, I'm a uh, uh, lump in our, our Latino uh, mm-hmm. brethren as well, the sisters. Um, about thirty percent, less than thirty percent across the board right. is represented either Hispanic or African American right. teachers. Uh, we only make up two percent nationwide mm-hmm. of male teachers. Just two percent. Wow. So imagine, wow. and imagine that. And then I was looking in Camden. Um, prior to Christie, we were about 51% African-American teachers in the city. Okay. Um, after the Urban Hope Act, uh, we're down to 30%. Mm-hmm. And that's including not just public school, we're talking charter school as well. Gotcha. We're only gotcha. 30% uh, of the population. So that's teachers. black male or? M- black teachers. Black teachers. Black teachers. Black teachers, so, black teachers 30%. So we're, we're probably even a smaller, a smaller percentage, percentage of that yeah. when you break it down. Like, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Um, and you know, I could count before it was a twenty when I was administrator about twenty eleven. We had about we had over ten to fifteen male administrators. Now um, I think it's down to maybe five. Yeah, and five, we, five people. We have four hundred and twenty students. I think four hundred twenty students in our building. We are pre-K through eighth grade. Okay. Mm-hmm. We have two black males in our building. Oh, mm-hmm. When you walk through the high schools, like Camden High, when I was in Camden High, there, was, there wasn't that many mm-hmm. um, African-American male teachers. Um, Wilson, same thing. Right, they, right. You know, I think, like you said, the, the shift in society, when back in the, like when your dad, your dad was growing up, mm-hmm. and my mom growing up, you know, forties, fifties, sixties, you know, that was the thing to be. You was, you know, a police officer, a, a, a cop, a, a teacher. They were in the community. Were there. They were respected. They were uh, held to a higher, you know, they mm-hmm. were held to a higher standard, and people looked up to them. Like if you were a teacher in the neighborhood, you know. If you you were you were looked up right right like, right wow right. you, you just know, put on that just, pedestal, just put on that right. pedestal like wow, wow. Go, Mr. Sutton Starch <laughs> and you and you, <laughs> you, know and you act saying? accordingly though right. there wasn't right. there wasn't a time that you doing whatever you are doing as a teenager and you'll see not see a Mr. Jenkins or Mr. Mm-hmm. Montgomery or Coach Hall right. driving down Mount Ephraim right. or cutting it. yeah you be like oh. 
Yeah, yo, 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 that's yo, what I see when I was in path work and I seen you know what I mean? You know, you know, so we um you know, Indeed. Coach King, like you really mm-hmm. saw them you in saw your that. community. Yeah. Again, Mr. Demary, you know what I mean? You saw those type of educators in your community yep. and it. you know, you 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 held them, like you respected them. But it was I like man respect. A, I think it's a nationwide shift. Like they've gone away from respecting educators mm-hmm. and because of budgets and monetary reasons, you know, because we're paid by the public, you know, a lot of times they looked at us like, well, you're taking money out of my pocket mm-hmm. of taxes. Mm-hmm. But you need us because we establish how to operate society. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you, before it was a it was a farm system. You know, people had to work their families on the farm, mm-hmm. and that was it. But we we went away from that. So you actually, when you send your kid to school, starting at three years old, when you send your kid to school, you're practicing there. That's where they get their practice how to operate within a society. Mm-hmm. What are rules? How we, mm-hmm. what, what, what are rules? How do I interact with people that don't look like me? Mm-hmm. How do I interact with people that are not my family members? Mm-hmm. Right. Um, who, you know, how do I act, interact with other adults? Right. All these different systems that we have to learn when we we get out in society, you learn that through school. school right. right. You know, the right. socialization skills. Right. Uh, um, what's right and wrong? What what rules can we do? Consequences. What, consequences. consequences like right. right. And you, consequences. Yeah. All those things you yeah. learn through school. school. Yep. And it's just you know when you get home. You know, it's reinforced. It's reinforced. 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 Right, right, right. it's reinforced. So, um, and our society had changed the importance of that. Like, you know, your teacher is just as important as your parent. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, you have sometimes the adversarial right, aspect. Yeah. Like, you know, I don't care what that teacher right, says. Yep, you know, yep, you, you know. Yep. And now you you have that disconnect where mm-hmm. before you had that connection. connection. I think sure. the yeah. pandemic is going to reconnect that. Yeah, I truly course, think. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of parents learn yeah, yes, yeah. during the whole 18 months yeah, right, yeah. of what teachers really go through. Right. And again, my hat goes off to you as teachers because I think the parents Jordan. realize what their children do in school now right, and right. how important the teacher's role is. Right, right. So I think the respect for the teaching um, field, I think the educational field, I think the respect for the educator will look different come next week. I think all yeah, of that's going to look so. different for you guys next yeah, week. I, so. <laughs> I agree. Now, before we uh, wrap this up and get out of here, um, because you were an administrator, um, you know, VP and principal, um, was it hard? Like, did you feel as though your opportunity to advance in the education career was harder because you're a black male educator or, you know, by you being in the city? You know what I'm saying? It wasn't, you know, the opportunity was there and you was just able to move it, up, do your it, thing or um it all it all depends on who is actually in sitting in the superintendent's role and True. what their uh vision. Right, is. right, right. Um, at you. the time when I when I first started, um uh, and I had the opportunity to become a, a vice principal, um, that was the vision mm-hmm. of that of the superintendent at the time who they said that we needed more you know role models you know gotcha. more, more they gave more opportunities to african-american men to be to move up in, mm-hmm. in the position um and that continued um until they kind of stopped and you know when chris christie took over mm-hmm. to be honest with you that stopped and with with the way he wanted camden in the book right 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 like before the state takeover there was a different aspect right you had superintendents coming in and saying yes we're going to promote within we're going to move within and it was a little bit easier easier track and mm-hmm. being a male um i think that played that played to my advantage gotcha okay gotcha. because they were looking for looking more for that. they were they yeah because it was a need it right, was a right, need right, to right. Have males in the building uh male authorities in the mm-hmm. building because of the, the the way uh the climate was so they needed like you know, if we had more males in the building, it, more stability, right. you know. More discipline, more discipline, structure. More structure, more authority. So at that at that time frame, those years, you know, I, I was able to fit the bill and was able to to, to maneuver and be put in place to, to do that. Um, but like I said, all that changed when the new superintendent, state mandated mm-hmm. superintendent came in. Gotcha. Uh, when Christy came in. So, and then, you know, our board. Right, true. Right. Was dissolved. True, true. So, a lot of times, from from my experience, it's not 
so much you you, you had that uh, ability to maneuver, but it was what the agenda was from the higher right. Got you. Got you. So Makes if you fit that bill during that agenda time, you get right. the rise up, and then if not, yeah. Right. Absolutely. So then now with this other agenda that came through, you saw the decline and the reduction of of uh, African American males in prominent roles. Gotcha. You saw the reduction of African American uh, uh, teachers. Period. Mm -hmm. Reduced, going from fifty one percent now down to what thirty percent. Mm -hmm. So, um, with the advent of the the, uh, the new build, the new schools, right, the, right, the, right. The, the Renaissance and, and all the, of that type urban stuff. Right. 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 It was a systematic breakdown of. African American or like and Latino right, right, right. representation in in the, right. in the school district. Gotcha. Um, for the fact that once we're in, we stay in. We mm -hmm. we we average about fourteen years, you know, of experience where, um, you know, for budgetary reasons, they wanted to get. Yeah, get you out of there, yeah. get them, and them first of time, year teachers because they don't right. pay them as much. They don't pay them as right. much, and they're they're um. Their rate of staying in isn't as long. Right. They right. may stay in about three or four years, and then they're going yeah. somewhere else. Yeah, true. You know, but uh, a lot of times, African American males and females in Latin, once they're in the yeah. position, we stay. They, they get, right. they stay, and they. Right. It's like average, like fourteen years before they look to say I'm done or right, right, to right, go somewhere right, else. Right. So the, uh, um, that that rate of turnover, mm -hmm. you know, um, especially with the new these new schools um come popping up uh the rate of turnover uh the rate of where you know the influx of you know not even having the ability to tell students you know you, you should try teaching right you, know, right, you should right. go into this profession right, right, right. and i think a lot of times it's it, it's gotten harder for for uh stu um uh teachers that or or kids that's in college mm -hmm. to aspire to be teachers because um i think it's a little harder to get the license now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's it's uh, um, I think that they don't see the end result of how much money I can make mm -hmm. compared to private right 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 mm -hmm. get that to, projection to, right, right. You know what I'm saying? To, because they don't even have um, the uh, alternative route anymore I don't think that was you know another because we right. both when we started out you know what I'm saying yeah, we they went don't, the, I don't uh, think that's even you know an option I don't even think that's an option right anymore. because that was another thing because they were losing teachers right so that was a way to try to get right. us and teachers they, period to get right. in there so and they wanted yeah. people from different backgrounds and different like that diversity to come mm -hmm. back and I think when you start losing that lack of diversity mm -hmm. and the way people uh, the different ways people educate or, or teach um, you know you see where the, the problems are starting back to arise in the right. classroom so right. I think they need to get back to that giving, giving more students opportunities more college yeah. students opportunities yeah. to to try this situation, right. to try they teaching, need, to try like you were saying, they need to make they need to make education, being an educator, sexy again. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. It's not, it's <laughs> they need not, to put it back it, on the it, forefront. forefront. Like, it's, right. it's, it's cool to be an educator. And that's it's what, successful to be an educator. You know what I'm saying? Right. We need to get back to that. And that's you know what, what I'm I'm tell, you know, try to tell a student. I said, you know, you, you guys look at Drake and all these other guys out here, but they all had teachers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All of them had teachers. Mm -hmm. I said, you can't, I said, you know, LeBron James, he had teachers. teachers. Yeah. He, had, he had to go to school. <laughs> like, like, you know, you, you just don't wake up and, and not become, become, become that. that. You know what I'm saying? Or not go to school and become that. I said, right. everybody has to go through school. Yeah, right. So, you know, at so some point, you may. We're, you know, the, we're, the, we're the gatekeepers. We're the gatekeepers. <laughs> yeah. you know? Now, before we get out of here, um, I'm going to put you on the spot. I just want to eat. Which one do you feel, since you've done both and you're currently back in the classroom, do you prefer being an administrator or a teacher? <laughs> All right, let me put it to you like this. <laughs> <laughs> My younger days, I preferred being an administrator. Okay, okay. Uh, where I'm at now, I prefer teaching. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. let me put it gotcha. to you like that. That makes but, sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that definitely makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Well, Scott LaRock, you know what I'm saying? It was a pleasure, Scott. It was a pleasure. Yo, pleasure. It was a great episode. Well, thank you. Thank definitely you, uh, uh, loved your insight, you know what I'm saying? Because here, me and Cousin Tracy, we not only talk about athletics and athletes, right. we, we understand the importance of, that's the why village. they're called student athletes. The village. It's yeah. a village. The academic part right. is, is super important, you right. know what I'm saying? And, you know, educators, we play a major role and that's the success amazing. of the LeBron James of the right, world. Right. And, and right. you know what I'm saying? And, right. and our kids inspiring to go to school to, you know, maybe they got that athletic talent. 
right. to be able to go to school for free, things like that. But they still need the. They still need us. They still right. need us. You know what I'm saying? They can't push. get there without us. Right. You know what I'm saying? Need that so, push. Still so, need somebody to understand. Sure, indeed. Sure, right. indeed. indeed. So before we get out of here, any shout outs you want to say? You know what I'm saying? Oh, I want to. Uh, let me see. I want to. <laughs> I want to shout out uh, my family. You know. My lovely wife. I want to shout out my kids. You know, Ty and Jay. True, true. Uh, Jay right now is in um in Rowan right now. Mm -hmm. Third year, great mm -hmm. doing this thing. Um, you know, I think every once in a while he pick, he picks my brain to see if he wants to do what I do. <laughs> um, um, uh, shout out to everybody. You know, we can get to start this uh, new school year, and yes, I just want to give everybody. You know, hopefully everybody has a happy and healthy school year. True indeed. True indeed. Cousin Chasing. So, as you see, I have on my daylight show. <coughs> this week starts um, Suicide Awareness and Prevention Week with the culmination of Suicide Prevention Day, which is September 10th. Please, to all my viewers, wear your yellow on that day. Uplift anyone you can. Tag me at Daylight Foundation on Instagram with your photos in support of suicide prevention. Um, this is Suicide Awareness and Prevention Month, actually, but this is the week where a lot of activities happen, and the 10th is actually Suicide Prevention Day. Um, again, please wear your yellow. Tag me at either You Can't Be TH or Daylight Foundation with your pictures of wearing your yellow on Friday, September 10th. Uplift everyone, and remember, 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 sm a smile can change somebody's day. You never know what somebody's going through. So always be aware and understand people are out here struggling and to all my people out there struggling you are not alone reach out to me dm me inbox me listen this is a um a, a social um uh epidemic that we need to help um change the the course of and i'm trying every day to make sure i uh bring some light in a dark space there you go there and you're go. doing a great job at it too <laughs> if i must say you know what i'm saying <laughs> um i just want to you know always gotta shout out my cousin tracy for um you know hopping on my platform and 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 helping me out here um i think a lot of people want to see cousin tracy more than me so, so, <laughs> so, so it all works out you know what i'm saying it all works out again um one of my best friends here Scott, again, just appreciate you taking some time and out I, to, I um, to say, hop on. Thank you for giving me this platform, Tracy. You know, 89 all, all, all the time, 89. The great 88. No, the great 89. The debate goes on. The debate goes on. Oh, before I get out of here, just once again, because she does watch now, my daughter. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> she even went back and caught up on the episode she didn't see. So, uh, my, you know, my baby girl, Mary, down there at, like I said, Masai University, yes. doing yes. her thing. Doing you know what I'm thing. saying? Everything. So she's about three weeks in, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Tennis practice, classes, and everything is going keep well so good far. Work, so cousin. Yes. keep doing your keep thing. We'll uh, have you on the show. Um, one of these days, maybe when you come on for break, you will get you on here to just hear your experiences so far. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, with that being said, episode 19 in the books. You know what I'm saying? I'm your boy, Setchawayo, a.k.a. Coach Bird. I'm the host of the Birdcage Show. We will talk to you soon. It was a stone groove, my man. <laughs>